There was hardly ever a day when either yourself or Midoriya had found a free day together. Aside from the usual public holiday, it was once in a blue moon. Yet here the both of you were, lying in bed, foregoing the sound of both of your alarms tangled in the linen and staring into the sunlight that lit the room. Still complaining about the bed? Asked Midoriya while he playfully tangled his fingers through your hair. <laughs> ha ha, funny, you teased, sticking your tongue out at him. <laughs> he only chuckled at your childish reaction, nuzzling his nose onto yours and tickling you from the touch. He smiled at you from above, watching you lay on the soft pillows feeling your body next to his. What was it like? You asked curiously, turning your eye onto Midoriya. You know, looking after me? Oh, um, it was really awkward, to be honest, answered Midoriya with a sheepish grin. I never guessed you were a fan, at least the way you acted. You pouted while you lowered your head slightly towards the covers, keeping your eyes away from Midoriya out of embarrassment. The memories were hazy at best, but you did recall a few moments that you wished didn't see the light of day, such as the boundless enthusiasm you held when you tried to interpret the speed and trajectory of All Might's attacks. Your reaction did not go unnoticed though, finding Midoriya gaze down at you lovingly beside you. I think it was cute. He admitted, only giving you more embarrassment. I hope we have a child who's just as enthusiastic as the both of us combined. You do? You slowly asked, staring up at him now with piqued interest. Well, of course. Whatever they're excited about, I want them to be as happy as they can be. You smiled endearingly up at Midoriya, hearing the sincerity in his voice and filled with joy about his perspective on the future. Despite the fact that your wedding had yet to be organized, you loved his eagerness and his own take on the situation. He was an opinionated person when you got to know him intimately. I just hope they're not as messy as you. He added on top, causing that smile of yours to fall momentarily. How about I mess with you for a bit before we get some breakfast? You piped, grabbing his scalp and messing his already curly bed hair. Midoriya laughed out loud before he grabbed a hold of your waist, pushing you into the bed while the both of you tossed and turned, throwing pillows at one another. <laughs> All that surrounded you was your laughter, and his, overthrown by the happiness in the moment. With the roll of his sliding front door, you helped carry Kaminari into his home with his arms draped across your shoulders. Despite his height and his inebriated faculties, still aware of the situation, he clumsily dragged his feet. It wasn't helpful to keep him still. Shelly, we're almost there. You reassured softly while you tightened your grip on his wrist to keep him upright. Oh, good. <laughs> he cooed. I'm getting a little tired now. You sighed at his oblivious responses, realizing how much of his energy was zapped at his reunion. You were lucky to convince him to hand over the keys to his car so that he wouldn't have to drive. Although you were advised to take a cab back instead, seeing that it was safer for his car on school grounds. You reluctantly agreed to the plan, after witnessing Kaminari's jolly drunkenness firsthand. You almost drank your friend under the table. You commented with a smile. Ah, and I would have won too. He cheered to himself. The stairs seemed like a feat in themselves while you directed Kaminari to lift one foot over the other. He grabbed a hold of you a few times in his sway, but only laughed it off smiling up at you with that cheeky grin. You focused more on getting him to his bedroom, but with his arms hugging your waist constantly, it was becoming troublesome to keep him on his feet. After some trial and error, you held Kaminari while you spotted his bed ahead, 
slowly moving towards it before you gently coaxed him to sit on the edge. You sighed in relief seeing that you were able to safely get him to bed in his loft until he reached out and grabbed a hold of your arm, pulling you back in towards him. That smile greeted you before tossing you into bed and immediately wrapping his arms around you in his embrace. Um... Kaminari? You whispered, earning a hum from him. You laid still, staring up at Kaminari whose drunken eyes drowned in yours. The smell of tonight's punch lingered on his breath, but without another word, he planted a gentle kiss on your forehead his lips trailing until they reached your own. He was delicate with his touch, unsure and yet wanting to be close before he released you while running his fingers through your hair. (sighs) You should sleep, you advised, pressing against his chest. (sighs) He only hummed again, almost whimpered by the suggestion before he wrapped his arms tighter around you while his fingers combed through your hair. You smiled sweetly at his drunken stupor, but his fingers were difficult to ignore while they caressed and massaged, feeling each tip almost electrify tantalizingly against your skin. You soon succumbed to his need to hold you, falling asleep in his arms for the first time. The city skyline was a sight to see. It was your only escape and refuge with what had transpired over Musatafu. However, while you admired the dying light, you made your way towards a street corner, having received word from one, if not your only favorite pro hero in the city. It was odd to find that he sent you a message this time around, yet you wondered if this was a trap, knowing the delicate situation at hand but it wasn't his style to leave behind a message. Meet me after five at Tatooine Station. Public place full of people. Smart, you thought, while you finally appeared atop the station's rooftop, your light bursting into fractals against the twilight sky. You watched for the street corner below, filled with pedestrians that went about their day without a care. You saw nobody there. Nor could you find any agents or suspicious persons nearby. Perhaps Sarah was alone, after all, despite you being unable to locate him. You quietly made your way towards the corner, finding that there was a small alley close by. Heading into the shadows, you leaned against the brick walls and waited, keeping your eye towards the street. It was already the allotted time he requested to meet, yet not a sight or word from him anywhere. Ah, you made it. You turned to find him in the alley, hanging upside down by his tape and without his helmet. If it wasn't for the cheesy entrance, his wide grin was a happy sight to see. And so I have, you replied in jest, swaggering towards him. What do you want? I need your help. He slowly requested while he still eyed you upside down. Oh, what for? Haven't you spent enough of your energy chasing me down, Bucky? As opposed to you sneaking into my agency? You froze, recalling that eventful afternoon when you snuck into the halls of his agency only to find him in a less than convenient state. The thought of it was tantalizing, but you only shook your head from the thoughts that brewed. Now don't turn this on me! You spat. You did that to yourself, retorted Sarah. Look, I still want to help you. You don't have to do this on your own. That's why you told me about your past, even if it was a little. I won't ask about what you stole, but I think there's a way for you to get to the bottom of what happened with that student years ago. His words piqued your interest, listening intently to whatever he had to offer while you stood with arms crossed. Help my friends. He continued, still dangling from his tape. They've located where the Paranormal Liberation Front is based and are planning a coup. You couldn't believe the words you heard, staring into Sero's eyes despite his upside-down manner. 
He was genuine, as far as you knew. He hadn't lied to you despite twisting the truth about your existence and his affiliations. Yet, this was almost a godsend of news. Just stick with me, he offered. I'll inform Deku if he needs to know, but we need all the help we can get, and you can finally get some answers. Mulling his words in your head came briefly with a list of consequences, unsure about this flimsy plan. You reached out to Sero before you held his head in your hands, running your fingers through his short black hair that dangled from his scalp. Let me guess, I'm going to walk in and we're all going to be best friends forever? You questioned, staring into his eyes. I'll figure something out. He ensured while his own hand reached out for your cheek, sliding up to your hair with a comforting palm. I always do. <laughs> yeah, right, Bucky. With the light disappearing from the sky, turning dusk to night, you approached Sero before pressing a kiss onto his lips. He returned in kind, indulging in this moment while the both of you drowned in the silence. Pulling away was difficult. You had always felt this closeness time and time again, but now on the brink of danger and discovery, the both of you found some calm. With a deep breath, you pulled away from his lips, your fingers through his hair while he was in yours. You stared into his eyes, watching his grin widen with that boyish charm of his. Well, that's my part motioned Sarah before he strung up another roll of tape upwards from where he came. You're it! With a rough tussle of your hair, he pulled himself up towards the rooftop, leaving you behind in the street. He didn't say a word, only watched his form disappear into the dark sky and into the rooftops. Nothing stopped you from following after him, but you were distracted by the memory of that kiss touching your lips tenderly while you recalled the warmth of his touch.